Opie and Anthony. My $30 breakfast has arrived. That's, uh, that's amazing. You think for 30 bucks you're getting a big spread. Eggs, bacon, sausage, coffee. $30. Toast. English muffins. Well, what, what are you getting there for 30 bucks? We're heading toward a depression. Drop your effing prices. Well, every once in a while, Jimmy and I, we eat kind of similar. We like to uh, tell Kenny to get his ass over to the Park Meridian and get us some of this uh, granola, uh, non-fat yogurt, yeah. and some uh, some of those berries, uh, the strawberries, the blueberries, and the blackberries. And uh, it's a nice little uh, breakfast, right? Yeah. It was $15, which is ridiculous. They decided now to sell the granola separately from the yogurt and berries. Oh. So technically, I had to buy the $15 yogurt and berries and then add the granola for an extra $15. $30. That's crazy. Ridiculous. That makes no sense that <laughs> no. granola would cost $15. Here's a little something. This is not the time to, to raise your prices out there, you dummies. Someone's buying it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm not after today. <laughs> no. Huh? One and done. This is how it works. They think they're onto something. Guess what? You lost me. I go somewhere else now. That's what I do. And I go somewhere else. So what happened, Ann? Where are you going to start? You, you fell down. You, you got pulled over. And you missed well, your own Christmas party. Uh, what well, do you need from me here? I or should we'll, I just sit back and enjoy? I guess we'll start with uh, our last day on the air that we had. What happened? No, nothing happened, but that's kind of when my vacation started, um, when the Ron and Fez show started. Mm -hmm. That's when I started drinking. Uh, 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 Which was you, a Tuesday? You never stopped drinking. What was it, Tuesday? You mean you, you push it to the next level? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The official binge. Yeah, yeah, because it was it was vacation party time. Right. So uh, that's when I started, and then it didn't stop till I guess last night at about ten. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. But Christmas Eve was the night where um, I went to um, my aunt uncle's house. All the relatives are over. Nice. And we do now Secret Santa. Yuck. We don't get gifts for everybody because. It's a pain in the ass. It, it, there's no way I was going to a department store. I'd see it on the news and be like, I, I'll kill someone. Yeah. I'll kill someone if I have to go into one of those places. Can I Can I jump in for one second? I know, like, this is all you. Trust me. But yeah, just a quick little side note. Discussion. I also had a, uh, a Christmas party for my family. Yeah. And uh, my nephews and nieces are, like, getting old enough where they're kind of on to me. Uh -oh. And they come up to me like, so what did you get me for Christmas? Because all my other brothers were like, brought all their presents over to my house. And I said, uh, I, I threw this fine party for you. <laughs> you get a party. That's what you get. Thank you. I had a lot of candy and a lot of kids type of food. But I, like you said, I'm not going to deal with trying to figure out what these little brats want. <laughs> oh, Uncle Paul. <laughs> <laughs> we heard you. We heard you. I heard it. I'm like, I'm a little slow. <laughs> we heard you. So I'm with you. Uh, but you guys do the Secret Santa. But we do the Secret Santa. See, we used to get everybody. Everyone got everybody something. And I would wait till last minute and go nuts out of my mind in stores just buying stupid things that no one's going to need. Gloves and slippers. Yeah. You want a Snuggie? How many times did you see the goddamn Snuggie commercial? What is a Snuggie? Oh, a blanket is so inconvenient, Opie. Yeah. Because you got to put it on you, and, and oh, I can't cover everything. But the Snuggie is a blanket with sleeves. What? Yeah, so they're showing these guy, this old bald guy in a chair that looked like a monk. So look how inconvenient the blanket is. She's like, oh, and then I got to grab for the phone, and I'm, now I'm cold again. Why is she annoyed that she has to? The Snuggie is wear a, this. It's a robe you wear like a straight jacket. You put the robe, look at the monk. It makes you look like a monk, you're right. And and it, it's got sleeves. Look at this happy fella. But they act like a blanket is trying to operate the Whopper computer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The blanket, you morons. I, never, I did not see this commercial. Oh, every Dude, this snuggie. was on every two seconds. They look like they're part of a cult. Yeah. They do. Everything, uh, uh, this Snuggie, or every, every infomercial makes whatever they're selling 
uh, look like the answer to your dreams? Because whatever uh, it's replacing is so inconvenient. I saw the one for glasses, for the sunglasses, this oh, thing, yeah. and the, the HD wraparounds. The HD wraparounds, and and uh, uh, they're talking about the sun gets in your eyes. And some some people use clip-on sunglasses for their prescription glasses, and they show the guy clip them on, and then he's blocking the sun out from the sides and looking like, oh, <laughs> these don't work. <laughs> like everything's inconvenient. Like he just walked into a nuclear reactor, and, and the, the brightness is killing him. <laughs> But then he puts the other glasses on and everything's fine. Same thing with the Snuggie. You put a blanket on you and, and it flies off of you. It's, it's, she's wearing, using a flying carpet yeah. to try to cover herself. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand the, why you would be annoyed trying to work a blanket. So now you have a blanket with sleeves. The Snuggie. That thing looks awful. I saw this all Christmas season long. This commercial was on, yeah. and every time I'm just like, the stupid snuggie. The website is www.getsnuggie.com. <laughs> Get snuggy. <laughs> oh, I want that thing covered in pre. <laughs> 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 Ugh, the crusty. <laughs> <laughs> the snuggie is just awful. Who wants a sleeved blanket? I know, well, it's not a blanket anymore. Funny you should ask, Jimmy. Funny you should ask. Let's say hi to Chris in New York. Chris? Uh-oh. Chris. Hi. hi. Hi, Chris. Hi there. I uh, called because I ordered a Snuggie because uh, my daughter <laughs> said she wanted it, and then later on I found out she was only joking. Oh, <laughs> oh you dummy. <laughs> I know, but what a trauma they put you through. You know, you call, you think you're going to order this thing, but no, you have to go through it. The call lasted 15 minutes. Yeah, let me tell you something about everything you order on television. It's a uh, scam. Everything is some kind of scam to try to sign you up for other, to, stuff. For other stuff. They try to sell you other mm -hmm. stuff. They get your number, which they then sell to other uh, oh. companies. It's it's amazingly oh, ridiculous what they do. Uh, and then the, the big thing now that they're doing with all these infomercials is, but wait, we'll send you a second <laughs> Snuggie. Pay separate shipping and handling. And then the shipping exactly. and handling is oh, just about as much as the Snuggie. Yeah. <laughs> that must be how they make their money. And don't forget the little book light, too. Snug Danny? You know? Yes, Snug Danny? Oh, yeah, there's a book light, yeah. I just I don't remember exactly what product it was for, but uh, they were trying to backsell you on what they had just shown you. And they're like, and we're throwing in a U.S. And they showed a USB cable. And they're like, this is this USB cable is a $25 value, <laughs> and you're mind. getting it free. It's like it's a four-cent cable that everyone has 50 of. <laughs> yeah. I don't know one person that doesn't have 50 USB cables laying 20, around the house. $25 value, yours, absolutely free. Wow, thanks. And thanks then, for that. They'll, they'll like throw in like, you know, uh, zip strips and these special plastic ties to hold it together. So you get this, this, the zip strips and this a $90 value for $10. Yeah. But wait, yeah, we'll go double the it. order. Right. What? <laughs> Just pay, pay shipper processing. So yes, yeah, separate processing you know? and yeah. and uh, shipping. They call it processing and shipping, not even handling anymore. You know it's some minimum wage Mexican guy. That's working right. in this place. He's not making eight bucks a pop on uh, uh, boxing this thing up. <laughs> Unbelievable. This so did you like the Snuggie? Yeah. yeah. I haven't even gotten it yet. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, boy. They didn't get it. Such demand that, um, you know, it's going to take weeks for me to get this. But they did already charge me. Of course they did. Yeah. This thing is so, awful. Six to eight thanks, weeks yeah. delivery, by the thanks, way. Chris. All right. Six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks delivery. They probably hand make them as they get ordered because there's only three people that want a <laughs> Snuggie. And I hope they're really flammable. <laughs> like, I hope what gives them their great color is the gasoline type of a uh, color dye. That they have to use. You have a cigarette. Because the same people also sell, like, face burn bandages. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you can't get out of your snuggie because you're all sleeved in. Yeah, you're sleeved in there. Yeah. You can't just throw it off like a flaming blanket. You drop and roll, and it just wraps around you like burning plastic. <laughs> nice. This stinks to your body. Hey, here's the uh, snuggie commercial. Oh. You want to keep warm when you're feeling chilled. But you- all right, then turn up the heat or get a stupid blanket. Get a blanket. No, no, blanket. Listen, she'll tell you oh, why a blanket oh, I'm sucks. Sorry. Yes. Just, I'm sorry. I'm oh, the yeah. dummy. I'm the dumb. The woman in the commercial is actually nailing the blanket to her calf so it doesn't fly <laughs> off. Get a hold of yourself, miss. Right. It's a blanket. It's a dumb blanket. <laughs> she acts like it's a wolverine she's trying to put on herself. <laughs> <laughs> Panic stricken. <laughs> You want to keep warm when you're feeling chilled, but you don't want to raise your heating bill. Blankets are okay, but they can slip and slide. And when you need to reach for something, your hands are trapped inside. Now, there's the Snuggie. The trapped blanket inside? What is she talking like a, about? Your private pile? Yeah. <laughs> <that blanket? laughs> you could get trapped and beaten but with soap. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ever had to call 911 to be taken out of a blanket because you couldn't get bonbons with a remote control? <laughs> Dummies. What was the private pile? <laughs> Has anyone ever had a problem with a blanket? No. I'm trying to think if I've ever had a real problem with a blanket. Do, I, one time, honestly, I was watching TV, and I was I was going to reach for something, and when I reached my arm out, the blanket kind of came off my arm. Oh, no. So I had short sleeves on, and the arm was temporarily chilly. Yeah. But then I got what I was supposed to get, and I took the blanket with the hand that was still covered, and I flipped it over. And then my other arm was covered, too. It was fine again. So you didn't even need uh, sleeves on a blanket. No, but it would have been so nice because I wouldn't that. have gotten that little chill that I got yeah. when I was reaching for the for the lubricant. <laughs> <laughs> and how about the fact that your hands are sticking out and cold? Yeah. Like, part of the blanket is getting your hands under there. Yeah, and I, I'm sure they figured getting out. Getting all warm. Yeah. No, they haven't. Oh, not Look, yet? she's reading a book, mm -hmm. and her hands are sticking out. <laughs> she's wearing a backwards robe. It's a robe straight jacket. <laughs> Tie it in a knot in the back and beat your grandma as she wears a stupid Snuggie. Yeah, but you got easy access to grandma's backside. Yeah. And who doesn't want that? Yeah, you can take what? a dump in huh? it while you're still... Uh, <laughs> Nice and warm. <laughs> That's what they call it the dump blanket. It, it comes like on the on the top thing. It's got like a, a toilet paper roll holder. <laughs> and when you need to reach for something, your hands are trapped inside. Now there's the snuggie, the blanket that has sleeves. The snuggie keeps you totally warm and gives you the freedom to use your hands. She's so describing now, clothing, the remote, yeah, or read a book in total warmth and comfort. It's a dress. Use your laptop without being cold, or enjoy a snack while staying snugly warm. Ew! If they use another version of the word snuggy, snuggy, uh, sounds like a fetish. <laughs> I'm a, a snuggy. <laughs> right. <laughs> My daughter's a snuggy lover. <laughs> uh, kind of has that plushy, right? Yeah. I know where you're going. Yeah, the uh, it's a plushy. That was all over the place, though. For uh, Christmas, I, did, I swear to God, this is the first time I'm hearing of the Snuggie. I'm, oh, I've been a little out of touch with television. Uh, Tom on Long Island's got a little more on the Snuggie. Tom, hey, what's up, guys? Jimmy, hey. I love the book, man. Thank you very much. Uh, the best part about the commercial, fellas, is that they're at a sporting event. The whole family wearing Snuggies, looking like a cult. Will they high five each other? Yeah. They did well, show that they. They're, they he's right. They're, they're like in the bleachers. Yeah, there they are. They look, would wear that to a game. That's embarrassing. Watch them high five. Yeah, That's embarrassing. My mouth. Oh, my Watch the Snuggie family high five. I probably hope so the snipers know who to hit. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's why they're wearing the Snuggies. <laughs> He hates these Snuggies. <laughs> yeah, they high five. Ah, yeah, but the cold dorm room was good. When it goes, and those ch uh, drafty dorm rooms, look at her. And you know the back is easy access because it's yeah. open like a blanket. <laughs> She's dating two players from the same basketball team, and they don't know it. <laughs> she has two different color Snuggies. Because <laughs> each time one comes and leaves, they stain it. <laughs> Yo, why is your Snuggie standing up by itself? <laughs> <laughs> That's machine washable. Hold on. Uh, what is it? How else would you wash it? No. Harlequin uh, girl from Buffalo writes, My grandmother bought my husband a Snuggie, but she got him the generic one from Harriet Carter, I guess, local something maybe. Uh, it needs to be assembled around you with snaps, which he's too lazy to do, so he walks around the house in this cape like a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Snuggie <laughs> with snaps. <laughs> what is this one? Uh, what's this one? Dave. How are you, Dave? 
How's it going, guys? Okay. Um, my my sister bought my mom. It's the QVC version called a blanket. And when my mom opened it on Christmas morning, she started crying. <laughs> And my sister's like, what's wrong? And she's like, are you putting me in a nursing home? Because I can work a blanket. What's wrong with you? I'm so good to you. <laughs> <laughs> Crying when she gets a Snuggie. Yeah. That's one of those. Terrible. It was absolutely terrible. That's one of those. We should have a list, but it's one of those gifts you, you get somebody that you don't give a crap about. Uh, it's here, just, here, uh, here, take this Snuggie. Take this Chia is. Pet. Take this. Crap there. gift. You're off my dumb list. Uh, so what is the slanket? It's just the same thing. Same thing as name? a snuggie, a sleeved blanket. Yeah, yeah. Slanket, slanket. Uh, hey, look. when they combine words, oh, stop it. Why? They don't do that. They're fun, Jimmy. It's oh. not. Yeah, they're fun. Oh. It's not. Yeah. Unless, it's, unless they're combining, like, who's your friend? Oh, he's a Canadian runt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boo. Ah, uh, boo. Ah, <laughs> uh, John in Orange County. Yeah, how you doing? All hey, right. Listen, my uh, mother-in-law bought us five Snuggies for Christmas, and I think they're made out of the same material as Sam Wow. <laughs> the Nathif. <thief. laughs> <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, the Sham Wow's another big uh, biggie. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, but let me tell you. Mm. Let me tell you something. This Snuggie, I feel like I'm in the church choir when I put it on. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, Fernando brings up a good point. I'm sure they'll Fernando. I'm sure they'll dump out down the hall, but someone out there will hear this. Go ahead, Fernando. True. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Great show. I just wanted to point out that if you got the snuggie and you're a guy, you're trapped on the snuggie. You can't you can't masturbate. <laughs> if, you're, if you're if you're watching porn on the computer or through on a DVD, yeah, true. You're trapped under it and you can't. There's no and, access uh, you get to your. Easier now. There's no access to your Peter. The Snuggie should have, like, a little doggy door on the front. <laughs> it's all a conspiracy, man. I hear you. They want us to join cults. No, well, You know the thing's just falling off of your shoulders. It's awful. You stand up. All right. It's not so to back. we went off on a tangent. Oh, so. yeah. I was talking about presents and stuff sure. and how we had to do Secret Santa. So I only have to get one gift for, for somebody. We On Thanksgiving, we actually pass around the old hat, yeah. pull the names out. We gave up on that, but we did that for years. And then Christmas, you get that person uh, a gift. Does, does the person that pull your name just try not to show the over-the-top excitement? Like, oh, oh. <laughs> no, because they got to get me something. Oh, it goes like... It's secret, so I pick a name, and I have to get somebody something. Oh, I see don't know saying, it's right? from me. Okay, yet. I got you, I got you. So uh, I got my uncle and uh, decided, because he likes uh, wine, to get a really, really, really good bottle of wine, nice. a decanter. Nice. nice decanter to a decant. I got four of those if anybody needs one. A decanter. Yeah. What, what does a decanter do, by the way? It uh, lets the wine breathe. It's yes, just another excuse to buy just stuff. Open it the, and drink it. No, the guy at the wine store told me I, this has to breathe for an hour. Nah. He goes, pour pour some in a glass and then pour the rest in the decanter nah. and then and then taste the glass and then taste what's in the decanter. It lets some of the alcohol burn off a little uh. bit. I, I've heard all that, but I can't tell it. Dude, it it really is. It was, it, and it was an amazing bottle of wine. Very good. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, I was drinking a lot of wine on Christmas Eve, a lot of wine, and um, uh, then uh, yeah, I went home, and uh, the thought once I got home, thank God you got a driver. Woof. Look. <laughs> I put the cruise control on. <laughs> oh so my God. One less thing I have to worry about is how fast I'm going. And then I keep it uh, in the right lane. What do you and do? you calculate, oh, what's fine. what's the speed? Because you don't want to be perfect, because that, uh, that's I, I, suspicious. About, about 62. 62 is the speed about 62. you, you would have figured. But in the 35 the, zone. The best, <laughs> over, over lawns. <laughs> Knocking over mailboxes. <laughs> Driving through people's backyards. Yeah. Got wine in the car. Yeah, uh, so, um, well, I got home, uh, although the next day Keith did tell me, he goes, I, your truck was a little in the middle of the driveway. Usually you're, you know, one side or the other, but I didn't think I, I was just parking for room. So I, uh, I get home, it's Christmas Eve, on the way, by the way, on the way, I'm thinking, I might go to the carousel. Of course. And if I had gone there, I would have drank beer. And j it would have just put me over the top. One brain cell that was left in my head that hadn't been affected told me no. 
just go home, you idiot. That's some responsibility. That's so nice. So I went home. Not the responsibility we're hoping for, but all right. And now I got pumps on my pool cover. Right. Pumps the water off, you know? How, how wasted were you? Um, I was doing pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I was doing pretty good. So uh, I go I go out back with a flashlight because I had to defrost the, uh, the pumps before I left. Uh, so I go out to check when pump's working. So I get the little flashlight. I go out back. And there was a strip of ice. It had to be, I don't know. 12 inches long by by five inches wide nothing and i slipped on that ice and went down and it was after midnight so it's officially christmas so the neighbors got to hear um santa yelling the c word the f word the s word i was screaming curses as i'm just laying down on my uh patio what kind of fall was it like a cartoon fall no it was Quickly a- on your back it was a uh, my my left foot went out from under me. I I went down on the side of my kneecap and the side of my elbow, which really hurt. Not at the time. At the time, I'm just like ah, you fell. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I finally you know go to bed. You like the old lady from the the medical alert commercial? Yes. <laughs> I've fallen. <laughs> My son Michael got me the life call alert. <laughs> uh, it, so I, I I went to bed and now my party is Christmas Day, which I've told everybody to come over at two o'clock. In Family, the friends, yes. presents, catered, yes, all in. Told everyone two o'clock. Right, it's not bad. I think it was about three in the morning when I finally got to sleep. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. I woke up at nine in the morning, um, with. One of the worst hangovers in history. It was so bad that uh, I was just, uh, my head was pounding and spinning. I was uh, uh, woofing. You puked? Oh, yeah. I was uh, just puking. Are you, aren't you too old to be puking? I My hangovers are bad. I don't puke when I'm drunk. Like, some people puke when they're drinking. I'll puke hours later. Sometimes a day later, I'll puke. Jeez. It's horrible. My hangovers are terrible. Hangovers are directly proportional to how good of a time you were having the night before, though, because what fun I had. That's a sign from God. It's not. It's alcohol. God is telling you something. And uh, so now um, it, it's starting to creep up. I'm laying in bed. I got a wet rag on my head, and I'm writhing in pain. And uh, uh, I, I'm looking at the clock, and time is flying by, and I'm not getting any better. And I'm thinking... It's going to come up on 2 o'clock, and I'm not going to be able to even answer the door. What is the wet rag get up? It just keeps my head cool, and my eyes and my head hurt so bad that the coolness feels good. So I took some aspirin and that, and I'm drinking water like crazy, just trying to feel better. And uh, thank God I get a text from Keith that says, uh, I'll be over in a little bit. I'm like, doors open. So I, I, I trod downstairs, unlock the door, go back upstairs, puke a little more, <laughs> lay down in bed, and figure Keith is there, everything's taken care of. Two o'clock rolls around, I start hearing people coming to the party, and uh, I'm still in bed. I'm laying in bed. I don't think I got... What time did I come downstairs? Do you remember what time I came downstairs? It had to be... It had to be probably f- uh, after five in the afternoon. Yeah, so yeah. It was after five, so they had been there for uh, like, over three hours. Yeah, over three hours. <laughs> and you made your appearance. They had dinner. Every, yeah, everybody ate already. They, they ate. ate. Oh, they did presents. God. Everything. I wasn't at my own party. Oh my god! I missed my party. Uh, I came down. Everybody was still, you know, hanging out. A little dessert. Playing some games, doing things, but there um, he is when you walk yeah. down the steps. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh well, that uh, look yeah. who decided to. Yeah, look who decided. I got that one. Hey, where you been? Oh, well, glad you could make it. Yeah, doing... Welcome to the. All right, they're all Get doing. Get out! They're all doing their Ryan. Get out! They're all doing their Ryan Seacrest impressions, making believe they're oh. you know. I want. <laughs> I swear to God, not acknowledging what's. Happening in front of their eyes. I wanted to unload on him like Dwight Yoakam in Sling Blade. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my house, Get retard. <laughs> retard. Push the guy in the wheelchair into the door. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, is he fantastic? Yeah, so, uh, oof. 
I was a hurting. And then, uh, you know, the weird thing about a bad hangover is you have one beer and you say to yourself, I really wasn't feeling that bad. How could I have felt so bad? You have to have the uh, prescription beer, medicinal beer. The first sip is horrible. But then once you're done with the beer, you go, did I really feel that bad? How many beers did you end up having knowing you had this horrendous hangover going? Oh, and then that night, going on, yeah. you just keep going until, you know, you go to go back to sleep. And then you wake up and feel better because, you know, I wasn't drinking wine. Mm -hmm. That wine will knock you on your ass. I drank a lot of it that night. And then uh, every other night was pretty much just, you know, beer or wine, drinking, having fun. Uh, but not really doing it. I really didn't do anything. I, I hung out at the house. I played uh, uh, Call of Duty Five. Nice. Um, I was uh, watching a lot of a lot of TV, a lot of bad movies, things like that. And then uh, uh, yesterday, my mother and Sal say, "Why don't you come over? Dawn and Joseph are coming over with the kids." And that's where we'll leave this. Oh, well. You had a little problem getting back to your house last night. No, getting to my mother and Sal's. Oh, two. Whip, woo, whip, woo. All right, well, uh, yeah, two. We'll continue with Anthony's uh, vacation nice stories on the way home in just a few minutes. Opie and Anthony. Hi, welcome back to the Opie and Anthony program. I have this. I want to announce and apologize to Kenny. Uh, my third show at the Borgata is on sale for uh, January 18th. The other two are sold out. And I'll. Uh, Wednesday, January 21st, I'm doing the Miami Co Miami Comedy Festival. I'm in South Beach uh, at the Lincoln Theater. And I thought it was going, I was flying out tomorrow. I'm so stupid. I'm like, <clears throat> Kenny, I'm flying tomorrow. He's like, no, you're not. It's the 20th. I was off by like 15 days. I'm <laughs> yeah, such an oops. idiot. <laughs> so, and I, the second, because I heard that little exchange go back and forth. The second I heard it, I was like, I know Kenny's right. Mm-hmm. Like you're like no, it's it's today. I gotta fly out today, and Kenny's like no, and you knew Kenny was right, and you still wanted to yell because he's crazy like that. Yeah, I was panic stricken because <laughs> when I said to Kenny, I thought maybe I just talked about a flight because I'm like yeah, I gotta fly tomorrow, and and the look on his face, it's the look that you'd always expect Kenny to have on his face. Yeah, like a yeah. blank. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, that's the, if you only heard him on the phone, you think that's how he looked all the time. Yeah, and he's like no, that's the twentieth. You know what? I hate Kenny now. Why? Why do you have to tell you? I asked. But Kenny just said, yeah, we're flying tomorrow. And, and you show up with all your luggage. He's not coming with me. That would have been beautiful. Oh, wow. Why do you have to say anything? I would have went Let to the airport. Let this dummy freaking get all his luggage. If I didn't say anything, I would have went to the airport tomorrow after the show. Kenny, you suck. Oh, with that, have let that happen. Scream. It would have been a panic. Yeah. I would have gone to the airport. You'd have been arrested. You'd have made a big scene. I would have been. I have a ticket. I gotta go before. Believe me, the the, the you, you do you know who I am would have flown out. They would have said, "No, we don't. Yeah. We live in Boston, Philadelphia, and Vegas." <laughs> that was hurtful. Please. All right. So uh, when we left you, Anthony was on his way to his uh, mom's house. Yes. And Sal's house. Yeah. You know, you do the Sunday uh, Sunday afternoon thing. Go over there and uh, what, what car did you see take out? Kids. I took the Escalade. Nice. Because, uh, you know, with the weather the way it is and the salt on the roads and stuff, I don't want to take the Mustang out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I took the Escalade, which isn't known as, you know, a race car. Right. I, and I usually don't. Um, I, I, I drive over the speed limit with it, but not not like I do with the Mustang. Um, so I'm getting on to the expressway. Uh, it, I have a very long on-ramp by my house to get on the expressway, which I like. Because I, I'm of the school of thought that if you're getting on a major highway, use the on-ramp to get up to highway speed. Whenever I see somebody at the end of an on-ramp with their blinker on and their head oh hanging out the window with their elbow <laughs> looking over their shoulder like, oh how did you fail? <laughs> right. How did you fail the entire length of the on-ramp to figure this to out? To fit in <laughs> to, to traffic. Right. It amazes me. And, and when I pass that car, I always look and go, up, oh, it figures because it's always one of them. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. So uh, 
I, I give her the gun, give it the gas, you know, wham, uh, working the Escalade up to highway speed. And I notice the back end of a police car. It's not a Nassau County cop car. Uh, it's not a sheriff's car. But it is a police car. Uh, so I see him. He's in front of me. I'm on the on-ramp. I see he's on the expressway. I'm on the on-ramp. I'm coming on. I get on. I move into the middle lane, and I'm holding my speed, which is over the speed limit, but not crazy, and I pass him. I pass the officer. This is a, a local town cop who I think has jurisdiction over about a mile of the expressway. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. God, you got Ugh. Yeah, yeah. It was a local uh, uh, town cop, but he does have expressway jurisdiction between, like, one exit. Oh, my yeah. God. So um, I didn't have anything better to do? Dude, well, so he's he gets right on my ass. And now I'm, like, in that position where you go, ah, is he, is he, is he going to do this? If you're going to just do it already, you know. So uh, it took a little while, but he hits me with the lights. I pull pull right over. Uh, it's expressway, so I pull over on the off ramp, and um, very close to the side. I give him plenty of room. Always give the guy plenty of room. Some people pull over in the expressway and leave the cop hanging out in traffic. <laughs> Just amazes me. Now the guy's pissed, you know. So I gave him plenty of room. He um, comes out, and he, he just asked me for my paperwork. Doesn't tell me what I did or anything, because I was at this point like questioning. I was like, I didn't do anything. He didn't get me on radar. He, I wasn't going fast enough, long enough for him to tail me and get my speed. Uh, and I, I had slowed down when he pulled up behind me. Mm -hmm. I had slowed down to highway speed, which is why he got right on my, my ass like that again. So it was a mystery to me. I'm like, you know, usually when this happens, I, I'm sure I know why I'm being pulled over. I'm doing 95 on radar. So uh, he comes back. And he goes, what are you doing? I go, I was getting on the uh, the on-ramp, and I go, you know, you got one of those choices to make. You either speed up to get past the car, or you slow down to get behind him. So I sped up, uh, and I ended up in front of you, and then I slowed down to highway speed. He goes, you passed me doing about 70, 70-something. 70 and I, I was like, I knew I didn't. I was in the 60s somewhere, but I didn't argue the point. And he said, when you were behind me, I go, look, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. I said, a lot of people, when there's a cop behind them, have no clue what to do. Do you slow down to the speed limit? Do you speed up a little over the speed limit? Do you get out of the way? He goes, well, I'll tell you one thing you don't do. You don't zip into another lane and pass me. Oh, snap. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of a you jam. like that. Idiot, what I did. Um, so uh, He was giving you the business. He was. And then he goes, he goes, I pulled you over before doing the same thing. <laughs> Of course he did. And, and I, I go, I'm, I'm like Jesse James on the expressway. I can't drive on this road. I'm going to have to start taking the parkway and take my chances with the Stadies. So um, he remembered you? He remembered me. Oh he goes, he goes, you were in a red Ferrari. Oh, my I go, God. I go, you were in a different and car. And then he goes, he goes you're going to tell me it was the same thing with the on-ramp? I go, I said, no, that was crazy. <laughs> I, I, like, agreed with him. I said, no, that was crazy. It was the Ferrari and everything. So uh, he hands me my stuff back, and he goes, I'm not going to write you up because I just know your little cronies are going to get you out of it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, cronies. And he, he called them cronies, threw my stuff at, in my lap, and uh, walked away. <laughs> I know your little cronies are going to get you out of it. Well, it's like you, you always say, man, like they don't dare give you a ticket. That's they right. know better. Oh, no. No, no, I never said <laughs> no, that. You were saying that no. in the office. No, I and I was this particular very officer, you were calling a chump. No, I said, thank you, sir. No, thank you, that's officer. That's not what we heard, right, Jimmy? I said, have a happy New Year, officer. Thanks. Nope. I, I smiled. I yeah. was very courteous because I'm always courteous to the police. I know I'm doing wrong when I do wrong. Jimmy, this one was a little no, much. Let me let me go to Jimmy. We, we heard it call. differently. We heard yeah. it differently. Anthony. Marginal call. Jimmy, this what, one. what did he actually say? He, Anthony was like, no, he said the cop was cool. He's like, he cop yeah. pulled me over. Was courteous and courteous, and uh, you know, he knew better, so he walked away. And right. you're right. No, right. I didn't say anyone knew better. You're right. I would never say that. I count my blessings any time. Something uh, about I, I dare you to lucky. give me a ticket. 
Yeah. yeah, we heard it. No, I never say that. You should. You, you, Anthony says one time. This is what he said. He, he didn't say anybody specific, but if he said if they actually tried to write a ticket, I would line my knuckles with PBA cards and punch their face and say, "Pick them." <laughs> no, no right. I never said that either. I was surprised. No, he didn't talk like that. I didn't even use a PBA card. You did. You call. didn't need I to. Didn't you know even better. Use one. You got cronies. Is, is it, I got cronies. <laughs> my cronies. Is it true you called him a rookie? What a rookie! No, I didn't call him a rookie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I, if he's listening, I want to say again, thank you for the courtesy uh, that he, he he gave me. Why are to, you winking? Uh, I should say this to let me. I'm not <laughs> winking. I'm not. Anthony doesn't even like you. Like a lot of times, you say I don't even make eye contact with him. Like when he yeah. hands him a PBA card, he cracks his window. Like you know how you flick a cigarette out the window. That's how he holds the PBA card, <laughs> and they come and get it. Doesn't even turn down its radio. Yeah. I, I tell him, no you want to play 52 card pickup? Yeah. And then I go. <laughs> Yeah, with PBA cards. Yes, with PBA cards. That's right. No. No, I don't do that. And this one, I, I got to tell you, every other time I've been pulled over, I've agreed that I was completely in the wrong. This time, it was a very marginal call that I don't really think I should have gotten pulled over for. You do realize you shouldn't be saying this time. What? I get pulled over about once a month. This is the first of 2009? That was the first of 2009. It was like, wow, that was fast. Four days in. Can I go local? Can I go local? Lake Success? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. It wasn't the Lake Success guys. Those guys are badasses. You don't, they drive Chargers, and they, wow, they you got it. And they don't like it. You drive through Lake Success. I So I can't drive through Lake Success. Mm -hmm. I can't drive through um, uh, Westbury. Wait, why not? Why can't you drive through Lake Success? Uh, because uh, I drive too fast. Like I can't drive the way I want to drive. Oh, okay. I have to. I have to. I have to put on my cruise control, because I will go nuts if I if I'm behind somebody that's doing sixty and I see the middle lane is completely clear, I will go right into the middle lane and and goose it and get past everybody, and that's when I get in trouble when I'm passing people, which is most of the time. So I have to set my cruise control, and just sit back and grit my teeth and go. Just you're not in a hurry. It's just take it easy, don't go crazy, and I have to do that through now Lake Success, Westbury, um, the Sixth Precinct in Suffolk County, which now is is all sheriffs out there. So I, I think I'm kind of in the know clear because I've been Who pulled over this? by every single one of them. The guys all know me now. Uh, they got yes. Yeah, so one basically, foot on the brake and one on the gas. Hey, basically, you're telling everybody out there that you have to be a regular Joe through three towns on Long Island. I pretty much got not a regular Joe. I get passed by a lot of people, and and it annoys me. You know, uh, one foot on the brake, one on the gas. Mm -hmm. I can't drive 55. You tell him, Sammy. Oh, it's just Heck horrendous. Dan. He can't drive 55, Jim. Oh my god, there's too much traffic, I can't pass. It drives me crazy. This is the song that's going through my head when I'm driving. What's this, 83 or something? Yeah, somewhere around right there. Some awful year. Big, big black and white, cuts the screw of again, and then I sing. Oh. Oh, you don't like this, Jimmy? Oh. Take my license, all that jive. <laughs> I can't drive. Yeah. See, he can't drive 55. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> what else rhymes? I drink five alive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy Burl Ives. This is terrible. <laughs> Stephen S. from Bayshore. And tells himself you'll still be filthy rich even if it takes you an extra 10 minutes to get there. Oh, is that what I do? Tells uh, himself. Maybe that it tells I, him. Yeah. That, that's know, that's what I have to do when I uh, drive. Yeah. Like this morning, um, I hit a wall of traffic. Oh, boy. And I, I started getting a little antsy. Up on the curb? What did you do? No, no, no. This is expressway driving. It's four, you know, whatever, uh, five in the morning, whatever it is. Sure. And uh, I, I get antsy. Like, like, why are you in the left lane and not doing 70? At this hour, you're doing 60 and you're not passing the people next to you. So it gets me kind of crazy. And I start looking for openings. I start looking ahead for openings. And when I find one, I take it and I just I hammer down 
and, and get past the entire thing. And then I look at my rearview mirror and just see this big block of headlights and go, what are they doing? Why aren't they in a hurry to get anywhere? One guy had his hazard lights on in the left lane. If you got a problem that you got to turn your hazards on, you better be on the shoulder or the right lane. Sure. This guy was in the left lane with his hazards on. I had to pull next to him in the middle lane and and just look at him until he finally looked at me. And I saw something from some faraway land that didn't understand the concept of turn off your hazards. It negates your blinkers, first of all. <laughs> it makes your blinkers useless. And people, you're in the left lane. <laughs> That's not the, what country are you in? Oh, it's annoying. No wonder I get pulled over all the time. People annoy me on the road. I get genuinely annoyed. <sighs> so in driving home, I set the cruise control. Very good. Because that's what I do. I, I don't I've been pulled over for speeding every time I'm pulled over. Every time I get pulled over, it's for speeding. It's not for an illegal lane change. It's not for not using my blinkers. It's not for equipment violations. Mm -hmm. It's always for speeding. So if I want to put the odds down of me getting pulled over, I set the old cruise, stay in the right or middle lane, keep her between the lines, drive like a good boy. You're thinking. But I've always done that. It's when I'm driving to where I'm going. That's the problem. Well, that's what I'm not thinking. Basically, I get what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. There's something going on wow. at your destination. Could be. Mm -hmm. We're going to mop up next. Opie and